Welcome to Legion Builds, where I guide you on how to bring your favorite characters into Dungeons & Dragons. This video and all my content is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. It's also dedicated to everyone who subscribes to my channel. I wouldn't do any of this without any of you. Thank you all so much. Today we're bringing in Earthrealm's greatest swordsman, Kenshi. Born a natural fighter, Kenshi only sought to push his limits and become even better. This eventually led him to meeting with a mysterious man known as Song, who told Kenshi of a mystical sword that could enhance his strength. But when he found this sword, its power overwhelmed him. Song then revealed himself to be Shang Tsung, hoping to remove any use Kenshi could be for Earthrealm's defense against Outworld. Left for dead, Kenshi was blinded and weakened till he heard a voice. The ancient sword Seto contained the souls of all who wielded it before. A line of honorable and strong warriors called out to Kenshi and helped him awaken power within himself, granting him both telepathic and telekinetic ability. In battle, Kenshi relies on his focused senses to replace his loss of sight, while using Sento to unleash telekinetic attacks at his enemies. Now, if you don't want to play a blind character, what's wrong with you? Seriously, you don't have to play this character blind, but don't be afraid to try. It could be fun. Heads up, I'm going to be building this as if you are going to be playing a blind character. This is the second blind character I've built in two weeks. Interesting. For today's build, we'll be using the Player's Handbook, Xanathar's Guide to Everything, and Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. We're using Standard Point Array to make things simple for you should you want to roll for stats. And we are multi-classing, so keep those minimums in mind. We'll begin with Dex at 15. You are fast and agile. Pretty simple. Wisdom will be next with 14. Your senses are highly attuned and your reflexes are amazing. Intelligence follows with 13. Your powers are mind-based, so you'll need to be good at this as well. Khan is coming in at a 12. Before you are blinded, you are an amazing warrior and in amazing shape. Strength is a little low with 10, but we're going to have to dump Charisma. Charisma is way lower than it should be for you. You are a likable guy, but we have to dump something because we're using standard point array. Though if we're asking your son, you suck and your charisma should be low. Don't worry, one day he'll understand why you pushed him away. Kenshi is a human with serious psychic abilities. Varying human grants you a free feat and skill with your stat improvements. Place plus one into dex and wisdom. For your free feat, telepathic found in Tasha's grants you plus one to wisdom and allows you to speak with one creature within 60 feet telepathically. But the creature must understand the language you're using and can't communicate back. It also gives you the spell detect thoughts and lets you cast it without a spell slot once per long rest. This spell allows you to read the surface thoughts of one creature you can see with Within 30 feet while you maintain the spell for one minute. These surface thoughts are what is most on their mind, which makes lying to you impossible. As an action, you can shift this spell to target another creature within 30 feet. You can also delve deeper into the target's mind by forcing a wisdom save. If they fail or succeed, they will know you are delving into their mind. You can also sense the thoughts of invisible creatures within range. For your free skill, take athletics. For your background, we're going to need the skills stealth and insight. Okay, we're not only going to jump into combat, but we also need to heighten your senses pretty quickly. Level 1 Fighter, start off with two skills, take Perception and Acrobatics. Fighting style enhances your combat prowess by choosing a style to match your fighting abilities. Blind Fighting gives you blind sense out to 10 feet. Within this range, you can effectively see any creature not behind total cover or if it's invisible. Second Wind allows you to ignore damage by healing yourself with a bonus action by 1d10 plus your fighter level once per short or long rest. Level 2 Fighters gain Action Surge. You can now give yourself a free action once per short or long rest. Level 3 Fighters receive their subclass. Time for more mind powers with Psy Warrior from Tasha's. There is a lot of psychic stuff in that book. In fact, if I say anything that's psychic, there's a good chance it's from that book. Psionic Powers grant you psionic dice. You have a total number of psionic dice equal to your proficiency bonus between short or long rest. The psionic dice are d6s and can be used to perform special psionic moves in combat. For these moves, Protective Field allows you to create a field around yourself or someone else within 30 feet as a reaction when damage is taken. The field absorbs some of the damage by reducing it by one psionic dice plus your intelligence modifier. Fire. Psionic Strike boosts your attack with telekinetic force. Now once per turn when you hit a creature with a weapon attack to a target within 30 feet, you can add damage to the attack equal to one psionic dice plus your intelligence modifier. Telekinetic movement allows you to move one object or creature within 30 feet of you that you can see. So for you that will be reduced
reduced to 10 feet. You can now move it to another spot within 30 feet that you can see. This one's not going to be very good for you, but this also means you move objects to your hand. How you throw Sento into the air, it twirls and then just lands in your sheet. You can only do this once per short or long rest, or if you use a psionic dice. Level 4 fighters earn our first ability score improvement, but we need to take another feat. Telekinetic. I'll let you guess what book it's from, adds plus 1 to intelligence, and gives you the cantrip mage hand. This allows you to telekinetically move objects out to 30 feet from you that weigh no more than 10 pounds. You can also manipulate objects with this, such as open doors, retrieve objects, and so on. You can maintain this spell for one minute, and this feat makes it invisible and requires no components. This feat also allows you to shove a creature with a bonus action, targeting creature that you can see within 30 feet. You force a strength save with a DC based on your intelligence. Should they fail, you can now pull them 5 feet closer to you or shove them 5 feet away from you. Level 5 fighters now have extra attack. You can now attack twice with a single attack action. Your psionic dice are now D8s. Okay, time to improve combat in a different way and get you a magic sword. Level 1 monks start things off with unarmored defense. Now when not wearing armor, your AC is 10 plus dex plus wisdom. Martial arts improves your unarmed strikes. Now your unarmed strikes and simple melee weapons can be dex based. You can make an unarmed strike with a bonus action after making an attack, and you can use martial arts dice for the damage. Your martial arts dice start off as a d4 but will upgrade over time. Level 2 monks gain unarmored movement. This improves your movement speed when not wearing armor, bringing your total movement up to 40 feet. Dedicated weapon lets you turn one weapon into a monk weapon. At the end of a long rest, you can choose one weapon that you are proficient with that lacks the heavy or special properties and turn it into a monk weapon. This means your katana, which would be a longsword, is now dex based, which is actually more accurate to real life. I will not be taking any questions at this time over that. Key grants you key points that you can use to perform special moves. You have a total number of key points equal to your monk level between short or long rests. Just so you know, you only need half an hour, not a complete short rest, to get all your key points back. For the moves you can use these points on, Flurry of Blows allows you to attack twice with a single bonus action unarmed strike after making an attack action for one key point. Patient Defense costs one key point to turn dodge into a bonus action. Step of the Wind turns disengage or dash into bonus actions and doubles your jump distance for one key point. Level 3 monks receive their subclass, and if you've watched any of my videos with weapon fighting characters, you know where I'm going. Way the Kensai, found in Xanathar's, are weapon specialists. Kensai weapons are special monk weapons you choose to gain special advantages on. At this level, you can have two Kensai weapons, one melee and one range. Choose your katana. Agile Parry turns your Kensai weapon into a defensive weapon. By making an unarmed strike while holding your Kensai weapon but not using it, you can add plus two to your AC until the start of your next turn, as long as you are still holding your Kensai weapon. Kensai Shot lets you add more damage to your ranged Kensai weapons, but you're blind so range is not an option. Deflect Missile allows you to reduce damage you receive from a melee ranged attack. Using your reaction, you reduce the damage by 1d10 plus dex plus monk level. If you reduce the damage to zero and have an empty hand, you can now use the projectile as a thrown weapon. Level 4 monks earn another ability score improvement, place this into decks for better attack, damage, and AC. Slow fall lets you reduce falling damage you receive with a reaction, reducing the damage by 5 times your monk level. Quickened healing allows you to heal yourself by spending 2 key points and rolling 1 martial arts dice plus your proficiency bonus. Level 5 monks gain Stunning Strike. Now when you hit a creature with an attack, you can spend one key point to force a con save, with a DC using your Wisdom modifier. If they fail to save, they are stunned until the end of your next turn. Focused Aim allows you to turn a miss into a hit. When you miss with an attack, you can spend up to three key points, adding plus two per point spent to the attack roll. Finally, your Martial Arts dice are now a D6. Level 6 monks now have key empowered strikes and magical Kensai weapons. Now your unarmed strikes and Kensai weapons are magical. Death Strike allows you to add damage to your Kensai weapon by spending one key point and rolling a martial arts dice and adding the result to the damage once per turn. You also gain a new Kensai weapon, but you only ever use Sento, so who cares. Finally, your unarmored movement is now 45 feet. Level 6 fighters earn another ability score improvement, place this into wisdom for better perception and AC. 
Level 7 Psy Warrior Fighters become Telekinetic Adepts, granting two new features. Psy Powered Leap grants you a short flying speed with a bonus action. This flying speed equals to twice your walking speed, giving you a flying speed of 90 feet until the end of your turn. You can only use this once per short or long rest or by burning a psionic dice. Telekinetic Thrust empowers your psionic strike. Now when you deal damage with your psionic strike, you can force the target to make a strength save, knocking them prone or pushing them back 10 feet should they fail to save. Remember, any DC you use for your fighter levels is based on intelligence, and monk levels is based on wisdom. So when pointing stats out, regardless of the system you use, both intelligence and wisdom need to be good. Level 8 fighters earn another ability score improvement. Let's start bumping up intelligence to improve telekinetic damage. Level 9 fighters gain Indomitable. You can now reroll one failed saving throw per long rest. This includes death saves. Level 10 Psy Warrior fighters now have Guarded Mind. You have resistance to psychic damage, and if you start your turn charmed or frightened, you can expend a psionic dice to end every effect on yourself. Level 11 fighters receive extra attack times 2. You can now attack 3 times with a single attack action. This means right now you have a grand total of 8 attacks with action surge and flurry of blows in one turn. Your psionic dice are now d10s. Level 12 fighters earn another ability score improvement. Bump up intelligence again. Level 13 fighters gain a second use of Indomitable. Our final level is level 14 fighter and you earn our final ability score improvement. Let's cap off decks for better AC, attack, and damage. Now that we've hit level 20, let's recap. Your stats are strength 10, dex 20, con 12, intelligence 18, wisdom 18, charisma 8. Your total levels are monk 6, fighter 14. Let's dive in. You are definitely ready for the tournament. Wielding Sento, you're dealing 1d8 plus 5 with one hand or 1d10 plus 5 with two hands. You can add 1d10 plus 4 force damage and 1d6 extra slashing damage. You can stun your enemies, knock them back, knock them prone, pull them closer to you. Using Sento as a defensive weapon, you can add plus 2 to your AC and can still attack up to 8 times. And it's all magical. Speaking of AC, yours is 19 or 21. One. Downside, you might be a killer, but damn your health sucks. Because of your low con modifier, you are only just getting over 130 HP, taking the average. Not good for a frontline fighter, not bad, but it isn't good. Thank the Elder Gods your AC is 19, which will not help you once you get to the final boss, but you won't be fighting alone. Your charisma sucks, which means certain spells will be great against you. Finally, you have no range because of your limited sight, but this is only if you play the character as I am playing him in this build, blind. If you don't, that means you can add some ranged Kensai weapons and deal with enemies at a distance. But who cares at a distance because you are insanely fast. Attack with blinding speed while knocking your enemies around with your telekinetic abilities. Thank you for joining me today. I release a new character build each week on YouTube and Spotify. Over on Patreon, you can become a supporter and help decide next week's new video. This week's poll is now live, and it's the ultimate Jedi versus the ultimate Jedi killer. Who will it be, Luke Skywalker or General Grievous?